completing the whole, I think, inshallah, in this course, uh, in these slides, the learning outcome one. It says, understand the meaning and sources of information and knowledge for the workplace. Now, what actually the learning outcome says, we should understand that first. It says that we should be understand the crux of the source of information and knowledge for the workplace. Now, the workplace is what? It can be the corporate sector, it can be health sector, it can be any of the sectors, but again, it is a workplace. You have to be more formal in these way. And what the information and knowledge means in those areas, we are going to discuss that in today's lecture. Understanding the meaning and sources of information and knowledge for the workplace is crucial for making informed decisions and achieving organizational goals. So if we talk it in just a scrutinized way, it means we are going to take decisions and organizational goals side by side. That is why we are considering the source of information and knowledge. Now, there is a breakdown of the categories through which we can uh, like take an overlook of these. Again, these primary, secondary sources, the internal and external, which we will be discussing today, they all are mentioned in the indicative content. I am just explaining these to you people. Primary sources, these are the original materials or the first hand information. They include data obtained through research, surveys, experiments, observations, and direct experiences. Primary sources are often made reliable and credible. So in the organization, what primary sources is the raw material. That is the first hand, the brand new information which we give to the uh, any of the people in the organization. And however, the secondary sources work. These are the interpretations or the analysis of the primary sources. They can include books, articles, other literature that discusses the reviews or synthesizes the information from the primary sources. Then in the same, we have qualitative and quantitative data. Now the qualitative is the data, which is a descriptive one and often deals with the qualities, characteristics, and non-numerical information. It includes observations, interviews, case studies, and open-ended survey responses. These uh, provide a deeper understanding of the attitudes, behaviors, and motivations. This is the only difference between the quantitative and the qualitative data. In quality, we are going to assure that how we can perceive that in the organization, in the industry, by taking, by or interviews, surveys, emails, observations. However, in quantitative data, it is all about numerical and measurable things like structured methods such as surveys, experiments, and statistical analysis. What actually statistical analysis is, if we talk about the quantitative data, we are going to use all the statistical tools to calculate. Now, the data is essential for making statistical interference or inferences analyzing trends, identifying patterns or relationships within the large data sets. Like for example, I want to tell you that the pie chart, that what is the outcome of a research of a project. So it is very easy to conclude all the data in that pie chart and convey that to you people. In the same way, we have internal and external sources as well. Internal sources, these include the data and information generated within the organization. They can be financial records, employee performance reports, customer feedback, internal memos. Now, they provide insights into the company's operations, performance, and culture. So whatever is going to be happen or will be happen or is happening in the organization, that will be concluded in the internal sources. However, if we discuss about the external sources, they can include the market research reports, industry analysis, government publications, information from the competitors, that is through which we can take further decisions, customers, suppliers, other stakeholders. So the other entities which are considered as external, they are going to be included in the source of external sources. In the end, uh, this is the conclusion of the learning outcome one. Understanding and leveraging these different sources of information and knowledge can empower the organizations to make well-informed decisions, develop effective strategies, and stay competitive in their respective industries. It is essential to use a combination of these sources to gain information why this is essential to gain a comprehensive insights and a holistic understanding of the workplace environment. This is the main crux of it. Why we're considering the sources of information and knowledge in the workplace, just to know that what is happening inside and what will be happen uh, in the organization if we consider the external sources. Coming towards the learning outcome one assessment criteria 1.1, it says, 
explain the meaning of information and knowledge and their interrelationship. First, focusing on the command verb, we are going to give a detailed explanation of this question of this assessment criteria, and it should be supported by examples and a detailed explanation. Now we have to tell about that what is the meaning of the information and knowledge uh, with the context of workplace, and then what is the relationship of these two. The concepts of information and knowledge are interconnected but distinct in their meanings and applications within organizational context. The first thing is information. What's the meaning of it? It refers to the data that has been collected internally or externally from the various sources. At the start, we discussed that what internal and external sources are, and you know that what are its examples and why features are. So through those data, through those sources, we collect the information. Then it can include the raw facts, figures, statistics, and observations that have been gathered and organized for the reference or analysis. Information can be structured or unstructured and serve as the foundation for the knowledge generation and decision making. First, we perceive the information and then we generate it through the knowledge by adding up in the decision-making process in the organizations and sharing it within the employees or with the employees. Then categories of sources, again, the same thing, the internal information and the external information. The internal says that data generated within the organization, such as financial records, operational metrics, employee performance reports. And if we discuss the external information, it means the organization's market research projects, industry analysis, information from the competitors, customers, suppliers, and other stakeholders. So we are done with the information. Now moving towards the knowledge part. It says the knowledge is the understanding and the awareness that is derived from the analysis and synthesis of information like it is a sub subject of information, along with the integration of the data, opinions, facts, and conclusions. It represents a deeper comprehension of the underlying patterns, relationships, and implications present in the collected information. So information is just like a raw data, which we perceive and we collect, but knowledge is a vast variety of it, like a vast extent of it. Categories again are the primary sources, secondary sources, qualitative data, and I'm sure uh, quantitative as well. We all discuss these in the learning outcome one. The interrelationship between information and knowledge lies in the process of transforming the raw data into the meaningful insights and understanding. Information serves as the raw material for the knowledge creation. While knowledge in turn informs decision-making and drives the actions within the organization. So it is a clear difference that what actually the information or the knowledge is all about. Then it is effective utilization of both information and knowledge is essential for fostering the innovation, improving performance and achieving organizational objectives. Why we focus on the sources of information and knowledge? Just because we can perform well in the organization, we can perceive our goals and uh, regulations in the organization. Thus, we can create new products in the market, in the industry. Moving towards the next assessment criteria, that is 1.2, and it says analyze the potential sources of information. Again, focusing on the command verb, analyze means we have to discuss about the advantages and the disadvantages, drawbacks of it, and telling the importance of the specific topic and giving a conclusion to it. The question says we have to discuss about the sources of information. So they have already told us about that, what the question is going to be about. We're not going to discuss anything of the knowledge. Potential sources of information for the workplace can be categorized into internal and external sources. These sources can provide valuable insights and data that contribute to and from decision making and effective management. Now there is a closer analysis of each potential source along with the examples to make it more clear to you people. The first is the internal sources, that is the past data. Historical data generated within the organization, such as sales, figures, production metrics, and customer feedback can provide insights into the trends and patterns over time. Like this is what we can perceive in the organization as a past data, the customer feedback and production metrics. For example, a retail organization can analyze its past sales data to identify seasonal trends and customer preferences. For example, in May, June, the sales were at peak. 
then what will be the effect in October, November? They are going to adjust each and everything according to it with respect to seasonal things. Again, past records, previous reports, project documentation, meetings, minutes can serve as a reference for the understanding of the organization's history, decision-making process, and lessons learned from the previous experiences. For instance, a construction company can refer to past project records to understand the challenges and successes of the similar projects. And it's very uh, valuable, or you can say to the point example how, because the construction organizations, they are becoming sustainable as well on whatever they are doing. That's not our main concern at the moment. The thing is, uh, the projections of the houses, the construction of the houses, they are same. Like in Canada, the houses are made from the wood rather than cement and iron, like in Pakistan and India, I think. So the construction method is different, but the main behind projection of the past record is the same. We do consider things and then we pursue for the further betterment. Performance record. Data related to employee performance, including productivity, attendance, and skill development can help in assessing individual and team contributions within the organizations. A human resource development department can use performance records to identify top performing employees in areas for improvement. Definitely this will be done by the HR department because they are responsible for labeling the good employees and the improving employees both. Financial records. Internal financial statements, including the balance sheets, income statements, and cash flow statements, offer insights into the organization's financial health, profitability, and cash flow management. Till now, you must be very clear that what these statements are because we have done the whole course of it. Now, for example, a finance manager can analyze the financial records to assess the company's financial stability and identify areas of cost production. For example, we are spending a lot of operational expenses on the daily basis, then this is the responsibility of the financial manager to reduce it. Then the KPI, that is called the key performance indicators, internal metrics set to measure specific aspects of performance, such as sales, growth, customer satisfaction, operational efficiency, provide a way to monitor the progress towards organizational goals. Obviously, why the KPI is encouraged in the organizations a lot, because through these, we are able to know that what are the sales growth and the customer satisfaction rate as well. A marketing team can track KPIs such as the conversion rates, customer acquisition cost to evaluate the effectiveness of the marketing campaigns. That is the advertisement campaign we are doing with the rival companies and in the industry as well. Uh, then it comes with the external sources. We have, uh, again, in it, internet. Online resources, including the industry reports, market research studies, and new articles offer valuable insights into market trends, consumer preferences, and industry developments. For example, a technology company can gather market insights from industry-specific websites and new portals to stay updated on emerging technologies and competitor strategies. So this is how the online resources even work in the industries as well. If we discuss about the third-party data houses, they say that the external agencies and the data providers collect and analyze data from the various sources. Now, they can be articles, journals, thesis papers, many of the things. For instance, a retail chain can partner with a third-party data house to assess the consumer behavior data and demographic information for targeting marketing campaigns. Now, the organization as a retail chain, they are not going to be involved in the um, data houses collecting marketing campaign or the organization. Why? Because it can be expensive for them. So they're going to include or hire another person who is going to do these work. Then we have the last point, regional and national statistics. Data published by the government agencies, such as census data, which has happened uh, after the 10 years, employment statistics, economic indicators, the unemployment, inflation, interest rates, balance of payment, current assets, each and everything is in these economic indicators. Provide a macro level understanding of the regional and national business environment. Again, macro level uh, understanding means we are going to talk about on a national, not on an international level, like we're going to discuss the unemployment, their causes, um, interest rate, balance, um, balance of payment, the liabilities, each and everything that's going to be discussed. For example, a manufacturing company can analyze the regional economic data to identify the potential market expansions 
or shifts in consumer demand. Uh, definitely, how we're going to predict through it because uh, through the demand and supply graphs, through the utility graphs, through the infinity graphs, we are going to grab each and every uh, information from there and we can analyze that in our uh, business, in our project. By leveraging these internal and external sources of information, organizations can gain valuable insights, making informed decisions, developing effective strategies to remain competitive and achieve their business objectives. So this is the whole scenario of these sources of information. Now we will be discussing the sources of knowledge for the workplace. Same, uh, the criteria is same as in the context of command verb. Only the differences we are going to discuss about the knowledge now. Here is a closer analysis of each potential sources along with the examples. Keeping in mind, we're discussing sources of knowledge now. Internal sources, meetings. Regular team meetings, departmental discussions, and brainstorming sessions provide a platform for sharing insights, that is knowledge, exchanging ideas, and fostering collaborative problem solving. For instance, a marketing team's weekly meetings may facilitate knowledge sharing on customer feedback and market trends, leading to the development of more effective marketing strategies. When we are going to discuss as a team within the meeting, definitely we are going to pour out the ideas of our thoughts, and then we can conclude to a betterment in the end. Then forums. The internal forums or the discussion groups, whether in person or online, allow the employees to share their expertise, experiences, and best practices. That is why we uh, always encourage forums annually and biannually both. For example, a software development company may establish an internal forum for the developers to discuss coding challenges and share innovative solutions. For example, if we learn Python languages, it is always a disaster in the end, even for the Java and C++. The questions, the queries are a lot. So you, we always discuss and end up in a discussion groups. And this is the only reason why in the libraries, there is a separate discussion group so that we can amend our ideas over there. Presentations, internal presentations, workshops, and training sessions conducted by the subject matter experts or experienced professionals can disseminate the specialized knowledge and insights on specific topics or projects, for example, I can specifically teach a few subjects because I'm having a specialization in it. Other than that, I can teach the other subjects as well just by researching on it, making notes on it, by like thoroughly doing the research on it. Only then I can be able to teach you maths, for example. For instance, a sales team may organize sales training workshops to enhance the team's understanding of the effective sales techniques and customer relationship management. Like, if we want to inculcate CRM in the employees, which are new, then we definitely, what we should do, we should organize workshops, regular trainings to them, through which way they can grab the consumers more and more into the organization. Then we have Kazen and quality improvement initiatives. Again, these all points are mentioned in the indicative content. I'm only discussing these. Implementing the case and principles and quality improvement initiatives encourages the employees to contribute ideas for incremental improvements in the process, products, and services. Now, case is a theory itself, and it is basically for, um, for the improvement for the process, products, and services in the organization, that is, through which steps we can make them better. For example, a manufacturing company may adopt case and practices to streamline the production processes. That is, the production process is not smooth. We're having a lot of hurdles in it and obstacles. We can uh, include the case in and reduce the waste, leading to improved efficiency and product quality. So the main purpose was what? Reducing the waste and producing more. And they should be qualitative product. Then we have external sources. In this, we have improvement teams. Collaboration with external improvement teams, consultants, or industry experts can provide fresh perspectives, best practices, and specialized knowledge to address specific challenges and enhance the organizational performance. How, for example, a healthcare facility may partner with a healthcare improvement team to implement the patient care quality improvements based on industry best practices. That is what the NHS do in the UK. 
they itself, they are the healthcare system there, but there are other agencies which are supporting them. They are specifically responsible for the cleanliness in the organization, plus providing the best medicines to those people who are uh, availing the facility of the NHS. Then we have staff undertaking specific goals. If we discuss this, for instance, an IT manager who participates in the industry conferences may bring back insights in emerging technologies and industry trends to inform the organization's IT strategy. That is, there are many people in the organization which are not liable enough or they are not knowledgeable enough of your specific uh, field. For example, a person who is more knowledgeable in the financial streamline the business won't, won't understand their terms and terminologies like creditors, debts, bad debt, provisional debt, like these terms and personal drawings. They could be new to them or they could perceive another meaning to it. When you are giving a presentation for that specific course, for, for that specific department, you can make them knowledgeable enough that what these things are and what are the new trends or what technologies we can use from this department to inculcate in the other and perceive more sales. Then we have the capacity efficiency and productivity. Now what these are, for example, a logistics company may compare its warehouse capacity, all right? With what? With the operational efficiency within the industry benchmarks to identify the opportunities for the process optimization and cost reduction. So we are talking about the capacity efficiency and productivity. First, we should know that what is the capacity of producing stuff in the organization. Then we should be efficient enough that in lesser time, we can produce the qualitative product and up to mark product, and then the productivity overall. Then the st stated benchmark in the organization, for example, in each month, you have to produce 500,000 units. So how we're gonna use that and we're gonna compare each and everything with it. Financial analysis and standard costing. Now, analyzing the financial data and conducting the standard costing assessments can provide insights into the cost structures, profitability and financial performance, enabling the informed decision-making and strategic planning because we cannot take a decision or we can make a decision until and unless we consider the financial analysis and all the statements in consideration. For example, a financial analyst may conduct a comprehensive financial analysis to identify the cost saving opportunities and improve the overall financial management within the organization. And by harnessing these internal, that is perceiving these internal and external sources of knowledge, organizations can foster a culture of continuous learning, innovation, and improvement leading to enhanced operational efficiency, competitive advantage, and sustainable growth. So you can see even in the conclusion that we have discussed the operational efficiency in it. That is how we can improve the daily expenditures through these things, competitive advantage, being unique in the market in the industry, and sustainable growth. Considering the 17 SDGs in the organizations can help us be, become a multinational or boost our sales in the end. So this was the whole scenario of the assessment criteria. The merit part says, evaluate the advantages and limitations of sources of information and knowledge for the workplace. Now they have already just break down the command group into the question that would actually evaluate means. You're going to discuss about the advantages, disadvantages, similarities, differences, importance, and discussing the perspectives of various authors in your assignment as well. And here we are going to discuss first the information advantages and limitations, and then the knowledge advantages and limitations prior to workplace. Evaluating the advantages and limitations of the sources of information and knowledge for the workplace is crucial for ensuring that organizations make informed decisions based on reliable and relevant data. Because obviously when we are going to have a reliable source of information and data, only then we can proceed to making a good decision. Each source has its own set of benefits and constraints that must be considered when utilizing them. That is again, a true phenomena. Here's an analysis of the advantages and limitations of the information and knowledge sources within the workplace along with examples as well. Cost. Advantages. Some sources of information, such as internal data and knowledge, can be cost-effective as they are readily accessible within the organization. Utilizing the existing data and expertise can help reduce the expenses associated with the data acquisition and research. 
when we are going to use the inside people in our in making the decision better or doing the research, then we can definitely reduce the cost. Limitation. External sources of information such as market research reports and industry analysis often come at a significant cost. Depending solely on expensive external data can strain the organization's budget, especially for the small business or startups. And definitely it is a constraint or an expensive part for these bodies, for the SMEs or even the small startup because it's not easy to conduct or to reduce the cost. For example, a small retail business might find it challenging to afford market research reports from specialized firms due to their high cost. They cannot perceive it, so they have to do it by their own self or they have to hire people through freelancing currency advantages. Current and up-to-date information and knowledge sources enable the organizations to stay informed about the latest market trends, consumer preferences, and industry developments. Timely data can help organizations make agile and um, informed decisions to adapt to what to be rapidly changing business environment. This is the main uh, advantage of the currency with relation to the information or knowledge. Then the limitation. Outdated or obsolete information can lead to misguided decisions and inefficient strategies. Using outdated data can result in missed opportunities and hinder the organization's ability to stay competitive. For example, a technology company relying on outdated market trends may miss the opportunity to invest in emerging technologies and lose its competitive advantage or an edge because maybe they were not knowledgeable enough or they were not informed on timely that what the currency uh, is doing at the moment. And they are gonna end up buying an expensive machinery at a wrong time. Then we have validating advantages. Valid and well-established sources of information and knowledge provide credible and trustworthy data that can be relied upon for decision-making. Valid information ensures that organizations base their strategies and actions on accurate and reputable data. This is the main purpose of the validated data if we talk about its advantage. We want an accurate and up-to-mark information data so that we can make the decision according to it. Limitations invalid or unverified information can mislead organizations and result in flawed decision-making. Relying on the, on the invalid data can lead to misguided strategies and financial losses. For example, a company relying on unverified market research data might make strategic investments that do not align with the actual market demand leading to financial setbacks. And that is at the moment happening in Pakistan. We are not an updated economy, nor we are, our systems are updated enough. So what happened is in the end, we face financial loss. However, at the moment, just because we are having a good deal with the IMF, and the World Bank, the stock market, and the stock exchange are rosing up day by day. Reliability and accuracy. Now, the reliable and accurate information and knowledge sources enable the organization to make well-informed decisions and minimize the risk of association with the uncertainty. Trustworthy data can support the development of the effective strategies and ensure the successful implementation of the business plans. The limitations of it are unreliable or inaccurate information can lead to fraud analysis and erroneous decision making depending on what on the unreliable data what can happen is that it can result in the wasted resources and missed opportunities for instance a manufacturing company relying on inaccurate production data may overestimate its production capacity because the data was not up to date so they ended up doing an overestimation of it leading to what to inventory mismanagement on operational inefficiency your one decision or your one mistake will hinder the working of the whole department. Not one department is going to be affected by it. Then the relevance. Advantages. Relevant information and knowledge sources provide insights that are directly applicable to the organization's objectives, goals, and target audience. Relevant data enables organizations to tailor their strategies and actions to meet specific needs and demands, leading to more effective outcomes. That is why we should always do the research, which is relevant to our industry, to our interest, if we talk about in the context of a corporate organization, corporate industry. Limitations. Irrelevant or extraneous information can distract organization from focusing on critical issues and hinder the development of targeted and efficient strategies. Obviously, we are not, we, when we are going to have irrelevant information, we are not going to talk about the real problem in the organization which we are facing at the moment. 
Overreliance on irrelevant data can lead to the misguided efforts and wasted resources. For example, a retail company focusing on irrelevant marketing trends may allocate the resources to product development that does not align with the consumer preferences, resulting in the law, uh, resulting in the low sales and product wasted. Because in the end, what is happening? We are not making the things relevant to what the problem was. So we are going to face these kinds of issues, low sales, less sales, and product wastage as well. Conclusion. By understanding the advantages and limitations of the different sources of information and knowledge, organizations can adopt a more strategic approach to data, to data collection and analysis, ensuring that the information utilized is reliable, relevant, conductive to effective decision-making. So this is the main crux that just to make good decision or proper decision or taking decisions on time, we have to consider the sources of information and knowledge in our daily uh, decision-making process.